Now, don't get me wrong here. I want to be clear from the very beginning that I am excited that John Cena came back when he did to WWE. It's true. I absolutely am. Roman needs a job or bitch for SummerSlam. <laughs> but no, seriously, when you look at where the tribal chief, the head of the table is, like the stars aligned, it's a big four pay-per-view. Assuming you're still going to be able to have it Saturday in Vegas, like you need a big time opponent. And because they don't have a big time opponent ready, you have to go get a big time opponent. One of the big time opponents where you could still do it. It still makes sense. And even though you've kind of sort of done it before, now the character dynamics have changed to the point that it feels different. So it's still somewhat fresh. Like Roman Reigns, John Cena makes a shit ton of sense as a SummerSlam main event. It's perfect. Fine with me. No complaints about that whatsoever. Look, I might not be the biggest John Cena fan. Certainly am not. I might, you know, sit there and be over the moon in terms of my fandom for our tribal chief, the head of the table. Because I am. And that's okay. Like, that's acceptable. So what happens when you cheer for real baby faces. Real baby faces. But I realize that whenever a John Cena comes back, that certain things come with him. I realize that a lot of people have had propaganda pounded down their throats for 10, 15 years or more, and they have trouble overcoming that. They can't see past that. They can't get around that. They buy into the bullshit that WWE so skillfully, expertly shovels down their throats. They eat it and like the taste of it. They're like, oh my God, John Cena's a 16-time world champion. If he beats Roman at SummerSlam at 17 times, he'd be the most world title. Therefore, it makes him the GOAT. You know, and you look at what he's doing with the Suicide Squad movie in Fast 9. He was the key villain. He was Dom's brother. Family. You know, you've got to start talking about he's the last great megastar of WWE. He's on the same level of Austin and The Rock and all this other bullshit. The dude was a prop for over a decade. Now, in terms of drawing power to compare to a lot of others on the main roster, sure, he looks better by comparison. But look at how many millions of people stopped watching WWE. Look at how many people stopped going to WWE live events versus during John Cena's decade of doom and destruction. Like, you also can't pretend that that's not a real thing, that that doesn't exist, that that doesn't happen. And even when you talk about the nostalgia of a John Cena coming back, like, every time he comes back, it's diminished in terms of its excitement and importance, even though it had been a year and a half almost since he had been around. You know, because the reality is, is that nothing's ever different about him. Like, that's what makes the missionary John insult from Roman so fitting and effective, because it's true. He's always the same, and some people have started to buy in and believe in the fact that he's so consistent and he's always the same, blah, 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 blah. And the reality is, is no. That should not be commended. That should not be celebrated. That's fucking lazy. And what John Cena comes across as is a guy in his mid-40s going through a midlife crisis trying to relive his glory years of yesterday. That's what it comes across as. But again, you got this weird dynamic of you know the Fox News age demographic of WWE fans. They're like, oh, he's nice with the kids and the make-a-wishes and it's not like the company don't fucking pay him for those appearances. And Got the folks in a younger generation than me, the tail end of the millennial generation going into Gen Z. And they grew up on John Cena. They don't fucking know any better. They didn't see when it was better. So what the hell would they know? I really got to come overcome all of that. But then you watch SmackDown this past Friday. And I couldn't believe my ears or I couldn't believe my eyes to what I was reading. You got people talking about John Cena lighting up Roman Reigns on the mic. John Cena giving it again to Roman Reigns on the mic. John Cena sitting there and lighting him up. And I'm like, eh, 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 time out here. Did we watch the same fucking segment on Friday night on SmackDown? Because it sure doesn't seem that way. Because Roman showed his difference as a character compared to a few years ago. A few years ago, it wasn't pretty. But this is Tribal Chief, Head of the Table, Babyface Roman Reigns. 
And he wasn't going to be rattled or phased by missionary John's bullshit. He said, I've seen John China's song and dance for fucking years. I'm not going to get hooked. I'm not going to get sucked in. And you could clearly tell, I'm sorry, you could clearly tell for a guy like Cena, who's so used to always being in a position where he's got to sit there and be able to get the barbs in and nobody's allowed to respond in kind, that when Roman's out there and said, well, maybe Missionary John is good enough for him and some of the fans for two plus decades, but it wasn't for Nikki Bella. Like, you could tell that fucked up Cena. You could tell that John China had a problem with that. You could tell that it threw him off his game. And the reason I say you could tell, and where my frustration is coming in with all these people that are talking about how John Cena got the better of him or he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roman on the mic, is because what largely transpired with John Cena was a bunch of nonsensical, driveling bullshit. Oh, and that and the fact that he could count to three. That was about it. Like, when you look at what John Cena actually said, it made no goddamn sense. He does what he always does. He's got to try and latch onto something else that might actually be cool. So, of course, he made the reference to blowing a kiss, like CM Punk references. Gee, I wonder why he's doing that. We fucking know good and well why. Then he talks about the fact that he was surprised that Seth Rollins survived because Roman almost ruined him as part of the Shield. Excuse the fuck out of me, but last time I checked, there was one member of S.H.I.E.L.D. that was the first world champion out of the three, and it sure as hell wasn't Dean Ambrose, and it sure as fuck wasn't Roman Reigns. Last time I checked, it was Seth freaking Rollins. Last time I checked, it wasn't Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose that was aligned with God himself, Triple H. It was Seth freaking Rollins. Last time I checked, it wasn't Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose that beat a Brock Lesnar at a WrestleMania or beat Brock Lesnar multiple times when it mattered. It was fucking Seth freaking Rollins. Last time I checked, it wasn't Roman Reigns that they had to sit there and try and pathetically align with his girlfriend who you call the fucking man because she brought more goods to the situation than Seth freaking Rollins. Oh, that's right. That was Seth freaking Rollins. So when John Cena's talking about that, it makes absolutely no fucking sense. You had a period of time, no matter how much people want to buy it or believe it or not, that Seth Rollins was damn near, if not more so, everybody's as forced as Roman Reigns was. And then to sit there and blame Roman Reigns for Dean Ambrose wanting to get the fuck out of WWE. I think, again, for people that actually know and understand, that makes no fucking sense. You know that's not true. You know that's not even remotely true. When you got to start deviating from the actual point to do insults and to do other things, it ruins the credibility of your arguments. It points out the lack of validity of said argument. Now, sometimes it works and sometimes it's funny and sometimes it, it's the shit. But you know, when you got to sit there and you start reaching and you start throwing out shit that doesn't stick, you throw out shit that doesn't make sense, you're making random references, it's just dumb. And should not be celebrated like it is some great victory of promo school by John Cena because it wasn't. And then for all the fucking things and all the shit that he's talking about, of all the damn people that talk about how somebody was protected, I know this motherfucker ain't talking. I know this asshat ain't sitting there and saying shit about anybody being protected. You think Roman back these past several years has been protected. Cena's got a much longer track record of that. They would intentionally sabotage people because they might dare be a threat to Cena from a draw standpoint, from a merch selling standpoint, from a fan attention standpoint. Give me a fucking break. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has had more entrances or more matches run through post-edit to Pump out the booze and pump in the fucking candy cheers like John Cena. Now he's going to sit there and talk about how somebody's a prop. He's going to have the nerve, the balls, the guts, the gumption with his hypocritical ass to sit there and talk about how somebody else is protected. I know you ain't fucking talking, dude. Because there have been damn anybody else when you're sitting there main event pay-per-views that are a third to a half empty in terms of tickets for and seats for the arenas, anybody else would have been sent packing from that top spot long before the fuck you ever would. And furthermore, you're coming in. The last time we saw you, you damn lost to a dude who also, by the way, is no longer with the fucking company since you want to go there. The last time we saw you, you lost, but you're marching your ass right in 
like the part timer you proclaimed you were never going to fucking be, and here's your title shot at freaking SummerSlam. Who the fuck's the protected one here? Like, really? You see what I mean? Like, at least when Roman went with the low blow, it made sense. At least when Roman goes with the low blows, it fucking connects. At least when Roman says shit, it makes sense. It's real. You can believe it. You know it's true. It's grounded in at least some damn shred of reality. John Cena does his fucking pathetic pandering to the WWE universe like they're fucking China and he's sitting there trying to get his Fast 9 movie to sell big time over there. Fucking sellout ass. I can't believe people are sitting there and legitimately trying to say that he was equal to Roman in this promo. I can't believe people are actually trying to say that John Cena schooled Roman Reigns in this promo. John China did none of that. What the fuck are you smoking? Maybe three, four damn years ago, whatever the hell it was, you could certainly say that. Roman wasn't in that same place. You know, he's not in that place now. It's different. It's much different. And if you couldn't sense it, if you couldn't feel it, you couldn't see it, you couldn't hear it on Friday, then I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. You're probably just too far gone in the pro scene and bullshit of WWE. But the reality is, is his promo on SmackDown Friday night was stupid. And we need people to stop pretending like it was something great just because they're getting all nostalgic about an act that in no way, shape, or form feels like a glorious nostalgia act. 